About a year ago, LIGO was in the middle of the Flat Earth Globe debate, so I made this video. And recently, my video has been the center of another debate. So yes, I will confirm there are two tangent points, one for each arm, and I did this for a very good reason. But I'll get to that a little bit later. Now, I think most everybody knows that Hanford LIGO is an interferometer with two perpendicular arms that are almost 2.5 miles in length. Now, since a laser beam is bounced off mirrors at each end of this beam tube, that beam tube needs to be straight. And that means that the concrete slab it sits on also needs to be straight. So I was able to get a hold of LIGO blueprints that included elevations for that slab. So the point of my video was to compare these elevations to both the flat earth and the globe definition of a level line and see what the results were. Now in my video, I provided a link to those blueprints so people could check the data that I used. And I'll do this again, it'll be in the description above. So I used the civil drawings for the Hanford Observatory. These are the blueprints that I used for the Northwest Arm that gave me five evenly spaced elevations. These are the elevations for the Northwest Arm. And these are the five blueprints that I used in the elevations for the Southwest Arm. Now, flat earthers like to say that water finds its own level. So what they mean is that the surface of water is the same as a horizontal plane. And that's why I've used water levels in these graphics to show the difference between the two different models. So up above, we have water levels that are at a five foot elevation. And this means that a five foot level line is one and the same as a horizontal line as determined by a surveyor's instrument. I also added Bev to the hypothesis above because he believes the exact same thing. Now the only difference with the globe hypothesis is that the level line curves down from the surveyor's instrument. So let's start with the flat earth hypothesis. Here is a graph with straight level lines between 529 and 535 feet. Here are those five elevations plotted on that graph. And it's quite obvious that we have a beam arm slab that is curved. In fact, it curves up over four feet from one end to the other. Now, flat earthers did argue that LIGO would only work on a flat earth because this is the only way that those mirrors would be parallel to each other as they hung from the pendulum. But you gotta wonder, is LIGO using curved laser beams? Now, when you Google surveying horizontal and level lines, click images, these are the diagrams that show up. I'm going to use this upper left diagram. And surprise, surprise, it matches the graphic that I drew for the globe hypothesis of curved level lines. So let's compare these elevations to the globe hypothesis. Since 529.63 feet is the smallest elevation, I am going to use that as my curved level line. Now I'll add the concrete slab, which is the equivalent of that horizontal line tangent to the end station. And finally, I'll add the other four elevations. So next I'll be using Earth curvature calculations, which are based on Pythagorean theorem. And of course, that requires a horizontal line tangent to the surface of the Earth, which would be the equivalent of a level line. And of course, the curvature drop calculation is measured from the horizontal line down to the level line. And this is the reason that I said these beam arm slabs are horizontal, and in this case, tangent to the end station. I use Metabunk for my curvature calculations, and of course that's based on a radius of 3,959 miles. So my curvature calculations are going to be based on the distance from the end station. The first calculation is based on a distance of 0 0.606 miles, which gives us a drop of 0 0.24 feet. And when I subtract that from the beam slab elevation, that gives me 529.64 feet. And when I compare that to the level line elevation of 529.63 feet, the difference is only 0.01 feet. That's less than an eighth of an inch. 
The next calculation is based on a distance of 1.231 miles for a drop of 1.01 feet. And we subtract that from the bean slab elevation, we get 529.65 feet, and we have a difference of 0.02 feet, but that's only less than a quarter inch. The next calculation gives us a drop of 2.3 feet, which again gives us 529.65 feet, and again, this is less than a quarter inch. And finally, we have a calculated drop of 4.1 feet. Subtract that from the beam slab elevation, and we have 529.68 feet. And here the difference is 0.05 feet, but this is less than 5 eighths of an inch. So let's think about this. I set this up using surveying definition of horizontal and level lines, and then I made metabunk curvature calculations, subtracted those from the bean slab elevations, and the accuracy is under 5 eighths of an inch. Now I did the exact same thing for the southwest arm. And in this case, the accuracy is less than one half inch. Let's compare both models. Up above, we have the Bev flat earth hypothesis, and this gives us a beam slab that curves over four feet higher from one end to the other. Down below, we have the globe hypothesis, and here we have a beam slab that is straight with an accuracy that is under five eighths of an inch. Well, I really doubt that this was just random chance because in geodetic surveying, level lines of equal elevation are curve lines. And when Bev reviewed my video, did he show that the elevations, my calculations, or any of my diagrams were wrong? Of course not. He needed content, so he made a straw man saying that the northwest arm was tangent at both ends. Now, Bev likes to call people in the GLOBE community model afflicted, but he is really the one that is afflicted with this model of straight level lines. Now, he's been in this debate for a long time, so I think by now he would understand that on the GLOBE, level lines of different elevations are concentric circles. So again, the concrete slab is tangent to the end station, and since we live on a globe, that'd be a radius of 3,959 miles plus the additional 529.63 feet. But the end station has a higher elevation, which of course means that the radius is larger, and there's no geometry that says that the northwest arm can be tangent to two concentric circles that have different radii. So here's a horizontal line tangent at the corner station, and I know that this is really going to mess with Bev and his buddy's head. But I think like other globe deniers, they really have underdeveloped visual spatial skills. Now this is just a two-dimensional drawing of the northwest arm. And since the southwest arm is perpendicular to that corner station, it would literally be coming straight out of the screen towards me. Now this is the 2D representation of the southwest arm. Now since we live on a globe, what you really need to visualize is that this concrete slab is actually tangent to a spherical surface that has a radius of 3,959 miles plus the additional 533.78 feet. And here I've added the level line elevation of the end station of the northwest arm. Now is Bev going to have an aha moment and go, hey, you know, I think I finally understand this. Nah, I really doubt it. I think he'll just use this to make more content. I mean, let's be honest. How could one ignore the fact that his own model was such a failure and then turn around and make a straw man argument to divert attention away from that truth? 